Okay, what's a superhero? A superhero that saves the world. Saves the world, that's right. What do you think it is? I think a superhero is a person that saves the day. Yeah, saves the day. What do you think so? That's right. All those are good answers. And you know what? Um, a superhero is also somebody that we want to be like, right? And we look at them and we think, oh, I want to do that. I want to save the day. I want to be like Superman or I want to be like Spider-Man. I want to save the day. And a superhero is somebody that we try to role model our life after. <clears throat> so, but what makes a superhero super? Can anybody tell me? What? Yeah, they can solve problems. What do you think? What makes a superhero super? What makes them super? Anybody know? Go ahead. Tell me. Mm -hmm. What makes a superhero super is that they have superpowers, right? It makes them super. And so the thing about being a superhero is that God wants all of you to be superheroes for the faith, too. Did you know that? Did you know that you could save the day too? Did you know that if you had the power of God in your life that you could do miraculous things too, just like these guys did? And so, um, can you put that up there? So, let's talk about what the superpowers of the Christian are, okay? So tonight I want to tell you one of the superpowers of the Christian, like we learned today, is the Word of God, right? The Word of God defeats Satan every time, right? So if you have a problem in your life, the Word of God can help you solve it. You go to the Word of God to find the answers for life. That's a superpower. That's something that the rest of the world doesn't have. It's a superpower. And so another, another um, superpower that we have, do we have pictures? Um, where's Justin at? Another superpower that we have is um, faith, okay? So remember we talked about David and Goliath, right? And he went before the giant, and the giant was this tall, right? And he came up to this giant, and do you think he was scared? No. You don't think he was scared? Who thinks he was scared? I think he was scared. A little bit. He must have been a little bit scared. But you know what he did? He, had, he exercised faith in God, which is a superpower that we have. We get that faith by reading the Word of God. That's how we get our faith. We learn what God's done in our life, um, what he's done in other people's life, and what he's done in other people's life, he will do in your life too, because he never changes, and he doesn't love anybody better than anybody else. He loves you all the same. He loves you guys just as much as he loved King David. Did you know that? And so the things that he did in King David's life, he'll do in your life too, if you have faith. And so... Um, So David, he used his superpower of faith. And then um, Joshua, remember we talked about Joshua last night and Pastor walked all around, right? He talked about that battle at Jericho and he walked all the way around, right? And what they did was they walked around that city and they walked around and they didn't say anything, right? And they walked around and they walked around. And so if you were going to go into battle and fight somebody and God said, all I want you to do is walk around that city, what do you think that, would you think, like, why do we have an army here? What would you think? What would you think? I would think that they would be there because... Yeah, well, what, what happened was God was going to show them that he was going to win the battle. He was using them to do, he, they were doing God's will, but they were exercising faith. You see, they had an army, but they thought, why are we going to walk around when we have swords? We could go in and we could fight with them. Or we have bow and arrows and we could go in and we could shoot them, right? Why are we going to walk around the city? But it took great faith to do it God's way. Sometimes we think of things that we want to do. We think of how to correct a problem. Like the one girl said, he saves the day. The superhero saves the day. But when we try to save the day our own way, in our own power, in our own thinking, with our own ideas, we will fail. If, if King David went up to Goliath his own, in his own strength and he did it his own way, he would have failed. So 
we have to exercise faith in God. And one way we do that is by doing things His way and trusting that His way is the best way that can be done, okay? So another, one, of the faith, one of the superpowers of um, superheroes of the faith is what? Say it. Faith. That's right, faith. Okay, so now, um, do we have any pictures yet? It's not working? Okay. So then, um, the next superpower that I want to talk about, the superpower of the Christian, is a, is a power called prayer. Okay? Does everybody know what prayer is? What is prayer? Yeah, it's talking to God, right? So whenever we pray, we're, we're coming to God, and we're coming to God with our needs, needs that we have, because we're weak in our own self, right? So if we can't do something in our own power, then we can get superpower from God by praying. And God says to call unto me, and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And so prayer is a powerful thing. Now, there was a man in the Bible named um, Daniel. And so he would pray three times a day. But um, the people in the government, they didn't like that. He was praying. They didn't like, like Daniel. And so they made a law that he was not allowed to pray. But do you know what Daniel did? He didn't say, well, because it's illegal to pray, I'm not going to pray now, because God says I'm supposed to pray. So instead of following what the, the law said in that area that was going against God, what he did was Daniel said, I'm going to pray anyway. And so he got up and he opened his window and he, and he prayed right out in front of everybody and he showed everybody that he was going to take a stand and pray anyway. And so what happened was they said, okay, Daniel, since you prayed, you broke the law, now you're going to be punished. So they grabbed him and they tried to throw him into a lion's den. They were going to feed him to the lions. And they, those lions had been down there and they hadn't fed them all week long. And those lions were getting pretty hungry. So what do you think happened when they threw Daniel in the lion den? What happened? God closed the lion's mouth so he came out unscratched. Yes, that's right. And you know, sometimes, even when we pray and we're serving God, we can still get thrown into a lion's den, so to speak. Even though we're doing right, even though we're doing what God says, sometimes things can go wrong in our own mind. We can think, oh man, I've been serving God and look what happened to me. Here I am in a lion's den. But do you know, when we're doing stuff for God, we're doing what God says to do, and we, we're obeying God, and things like that happen, that's when we can become superheroes of the faith. Because that's when we can exercise the power of letting God do His work through us. And that's where the real power is, is God. So, so Daniel stayed all night long in there in that lion's den with those lions. And when they came in the morning to find him, he was still alive because God saved him because he was exercising faith and he had prayed to God. So he was exercising his superpowers, right? So what's the second superpower we can have? What is it? Praying, right. So the first one is faith. The second one is praying to God. Those are superpowers of the Christian. Okay? So, let me see. Who's my next one? Praying. And then, um, okay, so Elijah was another man in the Bible who prayed. Yeah. And then he protects you. Right. And then he protects you, right? Right. And that's what we do. We have to pray, pray to God for protection, too. And so Elijah was a man in the Bible, who a prophet of God. Okay? And the people in the, in the country, they were being really bad. And so Elijah prayed one day, and um, he asked the rain to stop. He asked God to stop the rain from coming. And he prayed, and the rain stopped. Prayed. But then, after three years, that rain was still not coming, no, still not coming, and he prayed again and he asked God to bring it back. And God brought back the rain again. And after praying and praying and asking God. So so God was able to use him to bring those people back to God. 
through his prayer. And so that was a superpower. Now, those are good superpowers. Faith and praying, those are good superpowers. But I want to tell you about one of the most super powerful, powerful gifts that we can have as a Christian. And that's called charity. Okay? Charity is, is the most powerful gift that we can use. Because who knows what charity is? Does anybody know? Tell me what it is. Well, that's what we think of today as charity. But really, this word charity, it means supernatural love from God. It's love that God can give us, but nobody else can. It's love that no man can give you. It's a powerful love. And it's a love that will ca cause you to invest in someone else's life. And so when you invest in someone else's life, this is a powerful thing that will get their attention and bring them to God because it's showing the love of Christ in your life and it's being an example of who Christ is and when we show that superpower love, that agape love that no man has, these people wonder how are we doing that? How can we, how can these people love me? And God tells us to love our enemies, doesn't he? And so we can only love our enemies with superpower love, that agape love. That's the only way that we could ever, ever love our enemy. If somebody came up to you and hit you, do you think you would love them? No, you wouldn't love them. But you know, Jesus said, he says that, he said, you need to love that person. We need to love that person. And the only way that we can love that person is with the love that God gives us. That's called charity. It's called agape love. Okay? And so, Jesus, when he came down to earth, he used supernatural love. Because while we were yet sinners, when we were the enemies of God, we nailed him to the cross, right? We nailed him to the cross. We were his enemy. But God had supernatural love to us. That while we were yet sinners, he came down to earth. He left heaven the most beautiful place that you could think of, the most glorious place you could think of. He left that place to come down here to save us. And he saved us by dying for us on the cross. He gave his own life for our life. Is there any more that anyone could give for another person in their own life? That's, that's the ultimate giving, isn't it? What? I have a question. What? So God lives in heaven, and we don't know what heaven looks like, but it says in the Bible that eyes have not seen or ears heard those things that God has prepared for us in heaven. So we know that it's um, not like earth. It's different than earth, and then where is it exactly? We don't know exactly where it is, but God lives in heaven. And so, um, so Jesus, what did he do? He he healed people. He healed uh, the people. He healed men that were blind, right? He healed men that were crippled, and um, there was a man that was paralyzed. And four of their, four of this man's friends, they took him. They took him to the house where Jesus was. They were trying to get him to the right person, Jesus, but they couldn't get in the door because the, the whole house was filled. So what they do? They climbed up on the roof. And they dug a big hole in the roof and they lowered him down through where Jesus was. And Jesus healed him. Jesus healed him and he got up and walked. And why did he do that? Because he loved him. Because Jesus loved him. And Jesus loves all of you. He loved you so much that he died for you that you would never have to go to hell. But the only way that we can, the only way that we can escape hell the only way that we can have his love is if we turn to him. And Pastor, that's, that's my message, okay? Um, do you want to take over for the rest? Do you want this? Grace love. It's ever been shown.